world is advancing, and so are the dynamics of modern warfare. From stones and wooden clubs to advanced weaponry, technology has continuously redefined the battlefield. Recently, the United States unveiled a revolutionary hypersonic laser, a weapon that has captured global attention and sparked concern among adversaries. But what makes this hypersonic laser so formidable? How have other nations reacted to this new development? Join us as we unveil the shocking capabilities of the U.S.'s new hyperonic laser that has defied the laws of physics. After American engineer and physicist Theodore Maiman created the laser in 1960, it quickly became the go-to weapon for both science fiction authors and military strategists. This wasn't surprising. Though Maimon initially highlighted the scientific possibilities of his invention, the public immediately linked the laser to the heat ray from H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. Headlines at the time even called it a science fiction death ray, like one in the Los Angeles Herald, as noted in Jeff Hecht's book, Beam, The Race to Make the Laser. However, Maimon himself saw it differently, thinking of the laser more as a life ray due to its potential medical uses. Laser systems were first used by the U.S. military during the Vietnam War to help guide laser-targeted bombs. However, the use of lasers has only gotten better since then. They have been used to measure distance to a target, signal and communicate, and disrupt enemy optical devices. They have also been used to scare enemies. U.S. troops can frighten bad guys by pointing visible laser-aimed spots on their chests at night. However, lasers have advanced significantly, and the United States is making sure of that. This system is not just tools to support other weapons or non-lethal systems. Lasers themselves will become powerful weapons. Megawatt-class lasers will be deployed on the ground, in the air, and even in space, acting as ultra-fast defense systems. Colonel Michael W. Bowen, who directs the Air Force's Airborne Laser Program, stated that it's hard to fully grasp what lasers as weapons will mean, especially given their speed. Unlike airplanes or missiles, which we understand, the speed of light is much harder to comprehend. The Pentagon, however, wasted no time in exploring how lasers could be used in the military, from practical applications like guiding bombs to ambitious projects like the 1980s Strategic Defense Initiative, known as Star Wars. Yet it's only in recent years that the technology has advanced enough to make laser weapons truly effective against their targets. In the mid-2000s, the Air Force used its Boeing 747-based YAL-1 airborne laser to successfully shoot down ballistic missiles during tests. At the same time, the Army's Humvee-mounted Zeus HHMWV laser ordnance neutralization system was deployed in Afghanistan and Iraq to destroy landmines, IEDs, and unexploded bombs. By 2014, the Navy's AN-SEQ-3 laser weapon system was effectively disabling drones and small boats from the USS Ponce, making it the world's first active laser weapon. When the USS Ponce was decommissioned in 2017, a more advanced laser system was installed on the USS Portland, which successfully tested it in 2020 and 2021. The Pentagon has mostly focused on using modern laser weapons for defensive purposes. According to a 2023 report, high-energy lasers could be very effective in short-range air defense, taking out helicopters, low-flying aircraft, and incoming rockets, artillery, and mortars. With enough power, these lasers could even destroy crews and ballistic missiles. After years of progress, the U.S. military is finally bringing laser weapons into actual use. The Pentagon has been investing about $1 billion a year in over 30 laser programs since 2020, and has deployed several of these weapons for testing abroad. Some of these include the Air Force's High Energy Laser Weapon System, which was tested overseas in 2021, the Marine Corps' Compact Laser Weapon System, which Marines have been training with in the Middle East since 2021, Lockheed Martin's Helio System, currently on the USS Preble, and the Army's 50 kilowatt laser system mounted on a striker vehicle known as Guardian, which was sent to the Middle East for testing in February. The Army also received a 300-kilowatt Valkyrie laser to defend against cruise missiles. Blue Hallow's Locus laser weapon system, used in the PHEL, is likely just the beginning. In 2023, the company received contracts to develop new laser systems for the Army's next-generation infantry squad vehicle and a potential system for the Marine Corps' new tactical vehicles that will replace the aging Humvee fleet. Laser weapons are no longer just theoretical. They are becoming real hardware. 
The airborne laser is the closest to being a working, hard-kill laser weapon for the U.S. military. The Air Force sees it as a top priority, just after the F-22 fighter. The ABL's mission will be to patrol the skies near battle zones, using infrared sensors to detect the launch of enemy ballistic missiles. Once it spots a missile, the ABL, a modified 747 equipped with lasers for targeting and attack, will lock onto it. When the missile rises above the clouds, the ABL will focus a 15-inch wide laser beam on its surface. This will cause the missile's skin to heat up and rupture, leading to an explosion. The debris, including the missile warhead, will fall back onto the country that launched it. This is expected to deter the use of such missiles in the first place. The airborne laser system is designed to detect and destroy enemy missiles from the air. It locates missile launch sites and can guide attack aircraft to destroy other missiles before they can be fired. The system uses a powerful laser to heat and destroy a missile's surface from hundreds of miles away. Two main challenges were developing a strong enough laser and keeping the beam focused despite atmospheric disturbances. But these problems have been solved. The laser is powered by a chemical reaction similar to mixing household bleach and drain cleaner. To create a powerful beam, the laser is then focused using adaptive optics, which adjusts the beam to stay accurate despite atmospheric conditions. However, creating a system light and durable enough for regular use remains a challenge. The ABL, which could shoot down around 20 missiles per mission, is considered the first generation of laser weapons. Future advancements may lead to even more powerful and versatile lasers, potentially used on smaller aircraft or even from space. The ABL is paving the way for these future technologies. The U.S. Navy's Office of Naval Research has stated that they have also been leading the effort on directed energy weapons. These systems, as they explained, are electromagnetic systems that can convert chemical or electrical energy into radiated energy, which is then focused on a target. This focus causes physical damage that can degrade, neutralize, defeat, or destroy an adversary's capability. The Navy's DEWs include high-energy lasers, which emit photons and high-power microwaves, which release radio frequency waves. The Navy could potentially use these DEWs for power projection and integrated defense missions. The Office of Naval Research further explained that high-power microwaves, a type of DEO, could produce beams of electromagnetic energy across a broad spectrum of radio and microwave frequencies. These beams could be either narrowband or wideband, with the goal of interacting with the electronics in targeted systems, either causing damage or temporary disruption that prevents the system from recovering in time to complete its mission. HPM have several important advantages, such as attacking at the speed of light, having a large supply of power, and requiring only a moderate amount of electrical power from the platform they're on. They also use wide beams to cover large areas, making targeting easier. These weapons could be useful in crowded urban areas where traditional weapons might be limited. However, these systems wouldn't replace more advanced surface-to-air missiles, but would add another layer of defense. According to the war zone, this would allow air defense missiles to be saved for more significant threats like anti-ship ballistic missiles, while drones and other smaller threats could be handled by the HPMD DDUs. As technology gets better, high-power microwaves might be able to use microwave energy to damage the electronics of targets, making them useful for stopping anti-ship ballistic missiles like those used by China's People's Liberation Army rocket force. The U.S. Navy hasn't shared which defense companies are involved in the meteor program or similar projects. However, in December, Raytheon announced that it would design, build, and test two high-power microwave antenna systems to use directed energy to counter airborne threats at the speed of light. Raytheon stated that these systems would be tough and easy to transport for use on the front lines. Raytheon will provide these prototype systems to the U.S. Navy and U.S. Air Force over three years under a $31.3 million contract from the Naval Surface Warfare Center Dahlgren Division. This is part of the Directed Energy Frontline Electromagnetic Neutralization and Defeat Program. Stating that the U.S. is advancing in terms of military technology is not an understatement. This country has also sent two high-energy laser weapons overseas to protect American troops and allies from enemy drones. This is the first time such a laser system has been used for air defense in military history. According to a top official, these weapons are already shooting down threats. The laser weapon called the palletized high-energy laser 
was created by the defense company Blue Halo. It is based on their 20 kilowatt Locust laser weapon system. The first PHEL was sent to an undisclosed location overseas and started operations in November 2022, while a second one arrived earlier this year. At first, the Army didn't say where the systems were sent or if they had successfully destroyed an enemy drone due to security reasons. However, a top official recently confirmed that the laser weapons had successfully taken down threats in the Middle East. The Helios, or High Energy Laser, with Integrated Optical Dazzler and Surveillance System, developed by Lockheed Martin, is an advanced directed energy weapon that has been integrated into the U.S. Navy's Arleigh Burke-class destroyers. The first Helios system was delivered to the Navy and installed on the USS Preble in 2022. This system is part of the broader Surface Navy Laser Weapon System program, which aims to enhance the Navy's capabilities with advanced laser weapons. It is a versatile system with multiple roles. It can act as a powerful laser weapon capable of damaging or destroying small targets such as drones and small boats. Additionally, it functions as an optical dazzler designed to confuse or blind enemy sensors, which can be critical in disrupting enemy surveillance and targeting systems. The system is also integrated with the Aegis Combat System, enabling coordinated defense measures against various threats. The development and deployment of Helios mark a significant step in the Navy's efforts to incorporate more advanced, cost-effective, and scalable directed energy weapons into its fleet. The system is expected to undergo further testing and operational integration with potential upgrades, including increasing the laser's power to 150 kilowatts. The United States Navy is currently working on high-powered microwave technology, but it's not for cooking food. Instead, this technology is being developed to protect sailors from airborne threats. The Navy plans to install a high-powered microwave system on a ship as early as 2026. According to the Navy's fiscal year 2026 budget request, this system is part of Project Meteor, which is focused on creating a directed energy weapon prototype. The Meteor system is expected to offer a low cost per shot, a large number of shots, significant range, quick engagement with multiple targets, and the ability to both deceive and defeat threats. The U.S. military isn't the only one working on adding laser weapons to its air defenses. The Dragonfire laser weapon was first shown publicly at the 2017 DSEI conference in London. It was developed through a partnership between the British Ministry of Defense and private companies, including MBDA UK, Chinetti Q, Leonardo, GKN, ARCA, BAE Systems, and Marshall Land Systems, with contracts totaling 100 million euros. Initial trials were planned for 2018, but delays due to the COVID-19 pandemic and technical issues pushed testing to 2022 in Scotland's Outer Hebrides. Early low-power trials proved the weapon's ability to accurately track air and sea targets. In November 2022, high-power tests showed that Dragonfire could effectively engage targets using its laser in realistic scenarios. By January 2024, it successfully engaged an airborne target in Scotland, with the MOD stating its precision is so high that it could hit a one euro coin from a kilometer away. The Dragonfire has been tested against mortar rounds and drones and fitted to a Wolfhound armored vehicle. The MOD also highlighted the low cost per shot, only 10 euros for 10 seconds of firing. In April 2024, the MOD announced faster development due to new procurement rules, aiming to have Dragonfire on Royal Navy ships by 2027, earlier than the originally planned 2032. UK Defence Secretary Grant Shapps mentioned that an early version of the weapon could be sent to Ukraine for use against Russia in the ongoing conflict. The Dragonfire uses UK-developed beam-combining technology to create a more powerful laser with greater range and faster target defeat times. The laser, which is around 50 kilowatts, is designed to protect land and sea targets from threats like missiles and mortar rounds. It includes a targeting system with an electro-optical camera and a second lower power laser for tracking. The exact range of the weapon is classified, but it is expected to be used on future Royal Navy warships, British Army armored vehicles, and Royal Air Force fighter aircraft, such as the BAE Systems Tempest. The MOD plans to demonstrate the technology on a Type 23 frigate and a Wolfhound armored vehicle. In April, the UK Royal Navy announced it would speed up the installation of its new 50 kilowatt Dragonfire laser on a warship by 2027, five years earlier than planned, because of the growing need to counter drone and missile threats like those from Houthi rebels. 
Just a week later, U.S. House Republicans revealed a security assistance package for Israel, including $1.2 billion to help develop Israel's iron beam laser system to defend against short-range rocket attacks from Hamas militants. Other countries like Russia, China, France, India, and Turkey have also been heavily investing in laser systems in recent years, according to the RAND Corporation. The Perisvet, named after Alexander Perisvet, is a Russian laser weapon designed for air defense and anti-satellite warfare. It is one of the six new strategic weapons unveiled by Russian President Vladimir Putin on March 1, 2018. As of May 2022, five units of the system are reportedly in active service. The Perisvet system was first introduced by President Putin during his address to the Federal Assembly on March 1, 2018. The deployment of these systems within the Russian Armed Forces began in 2017, and on December 1, 2018, the Perisvet Laser Complex entered experimental combat duty. Putin stated that these laser complexes were expected to be fully operational by December 2019. The Perisvet systems have been deployed alongside road mobile ICBM launchers with the primary mission of protecting their maneuvers. On December 1, 2019, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu announced that Perisvet had been deployed with five divisions of the Strategic Missile Forces. Military expert Igor Korchenko, director of the Center for Analysis of the World Trade in Arms, has stated that the Perisvet combat laser is effective against unmanned aerial vehicles. However, its performance is heavily influenced by environmental conditions. While it works well in clear weather, factors like fog, rain, and snow can disrupt the laser beam. Korachenko also noted that the system consumes a large amount of electricity, making it impractical as a portable tool. Instead, it could be used to protect military bases and other strategic locations from UAV intrusions. In May 2022, during the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Russian Deputy Prime Minister Yuri Borisov claimed that a more advanced version of the Perisve, called Zadira, was being used by Russian forces in Ukraine. Borisov claimed that Zadira can incinerate targets up to three miles away within five seconds. Chinese scientists, on the other hand, claim they have developed a laser weapon that can fire indefinitely, which would make it much more effective than other laser weapons. Around the world, armies are testing high-energy laser weapons to hit targets quickly. If successful, these weapons could revolutionize warfare because they move at almost the speed of light. China says it has found a way to reduce the cooling time, allowing such a weapon to keep firing without stopping. China's military researchers at the National University of Defense Technology in Hunan say they created a cooling system that lets high-energy lasers keep working without overheating. This was reported by the South China Morning Post. According to the scientists, this system is a major breakthrough in improving the performance of high-energy laser systems. They explained that their system can maintain high-quality laser beams continuously, not just for the first second. Laser beams can heat up the air, which can reduce their quality and damage the laser. To solve this, the scientists developed a system that blows clean gas through the laser chamber, removing waste heat. This also made the laser smaller and more efficient. This is the first time China has made public some of its advanced designs and research on managing the heat in these laser systems. Countries like China and the US are trying to develop powerful laser weapons for combat that can generate beams strong enough to melt steel. These laser weapons could be a game changer in warfare because they can hit targets like drones and missiles almost instantly and at a lower cost than traditional missiles. However, cooling the lasers has been a challenge. Steve Weaver, a former British military official, said that if China's claims are true, it would put China ahead of the U.S. in developing these high-energy laser weapons, which the U.S. has struggled with. While laser weapons show promise, they have limitations. Their power decreases over distance, and bad weather like fog and storms can reduce their effectiveness. Cooling the lasers is also a major challenge. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link appearing on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.